Hey everyone, we're here in Montreal, Quebec, and we're gonna show you this super energy efficient passive house. One of the most interesting things about this house is that despite its size, it requires a tiny amount of energy to heat in the winter, even during our super harsh Canadian winters. So we're gonna go meet up with Richard, the builder, and he's gonna show us the technologies and techniques he used to build this passive house. This is actually a retrofit of a house. So a couple bought this house. They fell in love with the garden. The orientation of the backyard was to the south and they had in mind to already build a passive house when they bought it. But the existing building was old. It's a 1950s building and it was pretty much near the end of its serviceable lifespan, except the foundation was great. The ground floor actually didn't had almost no rot. So we were able to keep a large part of this building intact, use it and turn it into a new building thus saving building stock. This house is built to the passive house standard, which is the strictest energy efficiency standard building code internationally. And what it basically means is we have a lot of insulation, really good airtight. We have an energy balance from south facing windows to north facing windows to try and get as much solar gain as possible without overheating in the summertime. So it ends up being a super comfortable, healthy house to live in that costs almost nothing to heat and maintain. Right now we're in the mechanical room of the house and here we have the lungs of the passive house. So this delivers fresh air to all the living spaces and also evacuates all the stale air from the kitchens and the bathrooms. And this works continuously so you're always getting fresh air. It never goes into recirculation mode. The incoming air is preheated by a geothermal ground loop. So basically in the winter time that tempers the incoming cold air and in the summertime it cools it down. So that makes this machine work even more efficiently. I'm really excited to show you this. This is the central heating for this 2,800 square foot house. One 3,000 watt heater. That's tiny. It is tiny. It's the size of a toaster, basically. It's two hair dryers. This house is so well insulated that this is enough to heat the house in a Montreal winter. We also have the gray water system, which this captures the water from the shower and the bath, and then here we store that water and with that we flush the toilets and that way we get two uses out of the same water. So we just plug it in. You have to add bleach once in a while just to keep the water clean, but it's filtered. You're just flushing your toilets with clean water. So here we are on the north side of the house and this is the side of the house where we have really small windows, basically enough to make sure there's nice daylighting, which is why they're pretty small here. But you'll see on the south side how much nicer they are. Windows in this house are great. They're actually the highest quality windows I've ever installed in any of my projects. This window is European. It's tilt and turn, so it opens up and it's triple plane glazing. It's super thick and look at all these air sails. I got one, two, three. The frame is insulated. The window frame actually makes up on a standard window like 10% of the surface area. So if you don't insulate that, you just have this thermal bridge that you're leaking heat out of. So most people think that if you're gonna make a house airtight, you have to live in a Ziploc bag. And this isn't the case. In this house, because it was an old house, we had to solidify the structure by using plywood to really shore it up. So at the same time, we used three quarter inch plywood, which is low VOC, and we taped all of the joints with a special air sealing tape. And using that, we got the house really airtight. But that could be cost prohibitive in a lot of projects. So you could avoid that entirely and just use a monolithic membrane. It doesn't have to be polyethylene. So this is the, the wall section. So you see how really thick it is. So we have the regular finish and then we have an installation cavity where all the wires run. Then we have the original structure that we kept as much as possible. And then all of this 16 inches is dense packed cellulose. So it comes to the whole wall comes to like an R62 wall, but it was actually really easy to build and really easy to insulate. In a passive house, it's not required to have low VOC or environmental materials, but personally, it is an important part of my value system to try and put as many local and sustainable materials into a building as possible. So in this house, we used lime-based paints, which have no VOCs. In fact, you don't even smell them when you're painting them. On the whole, in this passive house, 
the, it's very airtight. We always get fresh air, but it was very important for me that to be a healthy, clean living environment. For water sustainability, we have a flat roof. So we have a, a membrane roof. We recover the rainwater from the roof. It comes down this pipe here, into that grill, into an underground pipe, into an underground cistern. So we have a 4,000 liter underground cistern, which we house the rainwater, which they use to water the garden. And so there's no city water gets used to water this garden. So here we have large windows in the south. And this is so we can have solar gain to help heat the house in the winter time when the sun is lower in the sky. When the sun is higher in the sky, we actually have these shading elements which help keep out the sun. And that way it helps keep from the house from overheating in the summertime. In the north side, that's where you always lose heat. You never get any gain from the sun in the north side. So we keep them small just enough for daylighting. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos about passive houses, you can check out our playlists. Also, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and subscribe to see more like it.